Hello there. In the previous video, we began our discussion of the basic properties associated to exponents, and we discussed these six primary relationships. So in this video, we're going to start by looking at the example uh, 2x minus 2, y3, z4, all over 8x minus 5, y minus 2, z minus 6, all raised to the power of minus 3. We're going to work through this example just to sort of review everything. And then we're going to extend these properties and work through a few examples and how they are associated with radical expressions. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, and remember there are several different directions you can sort of approach this problem. It sort of depends on what you're most comfortable with at first. And you can definitely do a lot of these steps uh, from the start very quickly. So one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce this fraction 2 over 8, which I know reduces to just 1 fourth, right? And I'm going to worry about this one, negative 1 third exponent uh, later. So I'm going to have 1 divided by 4 as my reduced fraction. Uh, everything that has a negative exponent, I'm going to reciprocate and put it in the opposite side. And everything that has a positive, I'm going to keep it where it is. Right, so currently, y cubed is on top, z4 is on top, and everything on the bottom, x5, y2, z6, are going to come up top. And what goes on the bottom? So, nothing from the bottom is still there, um, but x to the positive second uh, goes on the bottom. Right? And we have minus 3 there. Now I'm going to sort of combine things where I can. So I have a y cubed, y squared, which we can combine. Um, we also have a z4, z6, and we can also use our quotient rule to rewrite x5, x2. Alright, so what is that going to be? So we have no coefficients since 1 times anything is itself. So we have x5 divided by x cubed squared, so that's going to be x cubed. For our y's, we have y cubed times y squared, that's going to be y to the fifth. z4 times z6 is going to be z10 all divided by 4. Alright, since this exponent is negative, I'm going to flip the entire fraction to make that positive. So this is going to be equal to 4 all divided by x to the 3, y to the 5th, z to the 10, all to the power of 3. And then I'm going to distribute this power of 3 to everything that I have here. So this is going to be equal to 4 cubed, which is we know is 64. All divided by x cubed cubed is going to be x9. So power to a power, you multiply, right? Then we have y15, z30. And that's my final reduced answer. And remember, you can go in any direction. It sort of depends on what you recognize first and what you really want to take care of first before you um, actually start to get into it. Now, all these properties, uh, for example, x to the a times x to the b, is equal to the x a plus b, is very easy to prove in the set of natural numbers. But there's a very important property, uh, which we're not going to prove here. So this is true, not just for a, b in the set of natural numbers, but rather for all a, b in the set of real numbers. So for example, you can have stuff like x to the one half times x to the one third. So if we use this rule, that's just going to be x to the one half plus one third or x to the five sixth. Now of course, what does it mean to have a fractional exponent multiplying by itself a fractional number of times. We're not going to get into this discussion quite yet, but we're going to come back to it once we have a few more other tools. right? But there is one meaning that I do want to investigate now, and that's the meaning of x to the 1 half. Right? So let us assume that x to the 1 half is equal to 2. Let's see if we can find another equivalent meaning of what this Thing is, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to square both sides of this equation, right? So on the left hand side, power to a power you multiply, so 1 half times 2 is going to be 1, so I have x is going to be equal to 4, right? So I have that x is going to be equal to 4, therefore 4 to the power of 1 half 
is equal to 2. Right? So we have this expression. <laughs> uh, one can also verify a couple other things. For example, 9 to the 1 half is going to be equal to 3, and 16 to the 1 half is going to be equal to 4. So what other operation has this same property? Well, that's going to be the square root, right? So one can verify or prove or define, sort of depends on where your logic uh, starts and begins and ends, uh, that 4 to the 1 half is equivalent to the square root of 4, which some people just write as that. So if I have something like 8 to the 1 third, what would that be equal to? Well, similarly, if I want to find out what its value is, I would cube both sides to sort of make that equal to 8. So this is pretty much equivalent to the cube root of 8, which we know to be equal to 2. So one can sort of extend these properties and show that x to the 1 over n is equal to the nth root of x. And here, n cannot be equal to 0. All right, so if this is the case, and this is a very, very important property to memorize. So if this is true, what I can do is I can raise both sides to the power of m. All right, so power to a power you multiply. So 1 over n times m is just going to be equal to x to the m over n. And that's just going to be equal to, so the nth root of x is the same as x to the 1 over n to the power of m. Power to a power you multiply, so this is just going to be equal to x to the 1 over n times m. Then I'm going to reverse these, so this is going to be x to the m to the power of 1 half, or 1 over n, which is the same as the nth root of x to the m. So x to the power of m over n is equal to the nth root of x to the m. So this is the extension of that property. So as an example, suppose somebody asks you to write this in a radical notation. So using this identity directly, this is just going to be equal to the fourth root of x to the fifth. So if somebody asks you, write the cube root of x to the fourth in exponential notation, that's just going to be x to the power of four-thirds. Very useful, right? Um, we'll get into the applications of this a little bit later. All right, so let's work out a very extensive application uh, that sort of combines all these things, including uh, this idea of fractional exponents. All right, so let's see. Let's do 2 times x to the negative 1 third, y to the negative 3 fourths, all over 8x to the 2 fifths, times y to the negative 2 fifths, all to the power of negative... 15 halves. So if you want to try this on your own, uh, just take a couple minutes uh, and try this. Alright, so I'm going to begin by simplifying this fraction here. So that's going to give me 1 fourth in the fraction. And then I'm going to flip everything with a negative exponent. So him, him, and him are going to reverse sides. So the x and y on top is going to go to the bottom, and the y on the bottom is going to go to the top. So that's going to give us y to the 2 fifths positive. And on the bottom I'm going to have the x to the 2 fifths that was there before. Should be 5, five not 3. 2 fifths, x to the 1 third. And then y to the minus 3 fourths. And all of that is raised to the power of negative 15 halves. And that y should be positive. Alright, cool. Um, let's see here. Let's use our quotient rule. So y to the 2 fifths divided by y to the 3 fourths and x to the 2 fifths times x to the 1 third. So what's that going to be? All right, so that's going to be y to the 2 fifths minus 3 fourths all over 4 times x to the 2 fifths plus 1 third all to the power of negative 15 halves. All right, so let's get a comes denominator here. So 5 and 4 are relatively prime, 5 and 3 are relatively prime. So the least common multiple of 5 and 4 is 20, least common multiple of 5 and 3 is 15, right? 
So this is going to be equal to what? So that's going to be 4 times 2 is 8. So we're going to have 8 minus 15 all over 20 all over 4 times x. So that's going to be 3 times 2 is 6 plus 5 over 15 all to the power of negative 15 over 2. All right, so that's just going to be equal to y to the, so 8 minus 15 is going to be minus 7 over 20, all over 4 times x to the power 11 over 15, all raised to the power of negative 15 halves, right? So notice that my, um, my y is now negative again, so I'm going to shift that back to the bottom. So it's just going to be equal to 1 over 4x to the 11 fifteenths, y to the 7 twentieths. And this is actually really nice. So now I'm going to flip this whole entire thing upside down. So I'm going to reciprocate it and make that positive. So remember, if I have something over 1, this is just equal to that something, right? So once I reciprocate it, this is just going to be equal to 4x to the 11 fifteenths times y to the 7 twentieths, all to the power of 15 halves. Cool. All right, so what am I going to do? So now I'm going to distribute this to everything, and don't forget the 4. So this is going to be equal to 4 to the power of 15 halves, x to the 11 fifteenths times 15 halves, y to the 7 twentieths, 15 halves. Alright, so what am I going to do with this expression here? So remember, if I have 2 on the bottom, that's the same as the square root. So I'm pretty much doing the square root of 4 to the power of 15, which is the same as 2 to the power of 15, which is a big number, but we'll get to that later. So we have 2 to the power of 15, and then I'm going to multiply these things together. So 11 fifteenths times 15 halves is just going to be uh, 11 halves. And then, let's see, what do we have here? So I have y to the, so I have 7 twentieths times 15 halves. So that's the same as 7 times 5 times 3 over 5 times 4 times 2. So the 5s will cancel, leaving me with 21 over 8. So I have 21 eighths as that exponent. So if you expand 2 to the power of 15, if you want, or you can leave it as that since it's pretty big, uh, that's just going to be 32,768 times x to the 11 halves times y to the 21 eighths. Um, typically, you probably won't want to write this uh, in radical form since the denominator of x and y are both um, in uh, or different values, so you'll probably want to leave it like this. Anyway, this is just a review of the properties of exponents and also how they connect to radical expressions. We're going to get to radical expressions a little bit later, um, but for now, I hope you enjoyed.